Do you want to hear a scary story? As it's Friday the 14th, I thought I'd explore the lost chapter for the scariest tales that I could find. There once was a hero, his name was Mac, and he tamed a pride of lions. These lions were beloved by all. We're champions of us all, but in plains they did fall. It was a super massive egg that took down the pride of lions, and no one thought it was possible. They believed that none of the big boys could fall to such a curse, and the LEC believed it was only the one team that was cursed. Today, we find out if that curse has spread. <laughs> Welcome back, one and all, to the world's 2023 play-in stage. Today is all about second chances as we kick off our lower bracket with the LLA's R7 taking on the VCS's GAM. For the winner, a shot at redemption and qualification for the Swiss stage. And for the loser, it is a quick flight back home or long flight, depending on where you live in the world. I'm Quickshot, joined by Mark with a Z and Ender with an R. Good morning, gentlemen. Are you ready connected. for our first elimination matches of the World go, go. Championship 2023? It's gonna be a banger, ready to go. You know, I, I, I've I got my doubts, uh, especially later in today. I don't want to set any expectations too high, but that just means plenty of room to be is surprised. Is it just Mad Lines that get eliminated or is it the LEC's lowest seed that gets eliminated? That's what we're gonna find out today. I don't want to find out. Well, we're going to, Can we're we going delay to. It to. I'm tomorrow. excited. <laughs> Mark, if you are excited, give me an explanation on the format because I've looked at this plane's bracket. I'm struggling, man. I don't think I understand how to read. So could you break it down in the simplest terms possible? I will find out, but I'm gonna draw on the screen a lot because I yes. love doing that. So okay. this this is the bracket as people see it here today. We're going to focus on BDS uh, and kind of their path from how they're going to recover from here. So you're BDS the losers bracket. What's that? You're a BDS fan? I'm a huge BDS fan. Yes. I want to see how they make the run. So you can see that they have to play a best of three today. If they win that, they will then go and join B, uh, CFO over here. <laughs> okay. uh, if they can win that, then they will actually get promoted up and they will have to play PSG, who is the winner of Group A, given that they were in Group B. Whoa. So what those will be on the other side. Same thing, just the other way. Oh, okay. You can fall. Come on, Trevor. But can you draw for me? Because it's keep fine. Up, I'm enjoying right, I'll keep drawing, I guess. I'll I just, use, I like I'll use stretchy drawing, circles Mark. this time. So R7 Ooh. is going to be versus Gam today. That's actually the first matchup. I skipped over the first matchup, but okay. winner of them will play LLL, <gasps> who's waiting That's over there. big circle. Uh, Lau, we'll see if they can do it. And then do a they, stretchy circle for their opponent. And then yes! Fight someone. <laughs> That's left. I don't really know where it goes from there. No, but the thing is, there's best of three whales. from the loser side. You have to go on win three series. A best of three, another best of three for the team waiting, and then a best of five from the winner's side, who has not lost this series yet. Double best of five on Sunday in the middle of those matches. We'll face the top team that the group mentioned in the trip to the Swiss stage. Two teams will be advancing. That means a bunch of teams are going to be eliminated along the way. Let's find out who at home has been eliminated if you have been playing along with Pick'ems. The longest game at World So Far is no surprise, Team Wales versus BDS. The shortest game at World So Far is, World so far is no surprise, Team That's Wales awesome. versus BDS. I'm glad that the WQS is not technically World <laughs> because otherwise, Golden Guard Guardians would be the fastest game. Hey. Game one was 20 minutes. You take those wins. You yeah. take those wins where you can find them. Meanwhile, uh, was that Waka with the most Waka's kills there? Yep. Yeah. And Artemis. the highest KDA. Okay, fair enough. Most kills seems a little biased towards one role, potentially. Oh, really? Why, why yeah, is I that? Wonder, is I wonder serious? if Kaisa Zaya games <laughs> could, are a little imba. Could help a little bit. Obviously, we got KDA numbers on there as well. What's actually insane is that Adam didn't have the most kills in a single game when he was up like 800 to Listen, the top. When you, like, go on to, it broken, yeah. when you go on to lose the rest of the games, then that's probably a portion one. No, I'm talking in a single game. Okay, single fair, game. okay fair enough, fair enough. It wasn't totally, yeah, you're 100% right. Okay, let's talk about dragons. I love talking about dragons. Any LEC fans and viewers will know that. The most killed drake has been Cloud. 
two things will happen there. Number one, LCK fans, LCK viewers will be over the moon. And secondly, you can see Atlas the breakdown. Atlas cheering so, somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere, Atlas is chanting. Most pick champions, Renekton. Most deaths, sitting Renekton as well. I guess, obviously, there's a correlation there. Uh, and I Nautilus. Think most people are on the Nautilus hype yes, train. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I know um, uh, uh, Gulborg is particularly happy about the Nautilus. Also, he's nervous because I think he only predicted two pentakills for the entire tournament. There's one already, so I know he's going to lose out on that one for sure. For yeah. sure. I'm sad there's no Hextech Drake. That's personally pick for me what I'm most interested in. And Nautilus, I was surprised that he's even played that much but hasn't died that much because he's such a feeder champ. When you fall behind, you just start... Our supports have been great. Off. Our yeah. top laners have been kind of chattered, you know what I mean? So maybe that's part of it. Anyways, as One we shift time. our focus to today's matchup in our second series, it is Crowny and Team BDS facing elimination against Unipon and Detonation Focus Me in our featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz. Fighting for survival. DFM and BDS face off in today's featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz. Both Crownshot and Unipon are veterans of their leagues. Now they face the immediate threat of elimination. BDS have shown that they are powerhouses in the early game, but it's up to Crowny to carry the late. He has a lot to prove in his first world appearance, and one misstep could mean the end of BDS's run at the tournament. Udapon is looking to his veteran experience to rally his teammates and show that DFM are capable of taking down a major region team to keep their hopes of advancing out of play-ins alive. For these two incredible players, the pressure going into this series is going to be immense. Losing here means going home without a win to your name. Losing here means defeat. Losing does indeed mean defeat, Ashin. I think it also Wise means they're eliminated. Be a winner and a loser, all right? Don't let anyone tell you different. You can lose and still win. Okay, quick thoughts here before we turn our attention to the pre-match. BDS taking the DFM into today. I mean, it's just a lot of pressure, I think, on the side of BDS. DFM obviously has their own hopes and dreams, but I think there's less expectations, and the way that BDS lost is, is a little concerning. I think Adam was the guy who still was making plays, and hopefully the rest of the team kind of rally around him. I want less Ezreal from this dude, and I want no Senna from that dude. And okay. then, bot lane, oh, it's going to be a bloodbath. So less Ezreal, no Senna. We'll get some more critiques later in the day, yep. and hopefully <laughs> things will turn out. That is, of course, our second matchup. I want to turn our attention to our first, though, because coming up next, it's Movistar R7 versus Gam Esports, and the LLA's veteran juggler, Oddi, shared a few thoughts after their loss versus PSG. Hello, I'm Audi, younger Movistar Rainbow Sun. Y ahora mismo es como que me siento frustrado por el desempeño que tuvimos. Y yo creo que no fue lo mejor el día de hoy. La verdad, siento que cometí un, errores muy graves al segundo juego, más que nada. Siento que el equipo daba para mucho más. Creo que pudimos haber dado una pelea mucho más interesante para PSG. En el momento después de la si es que llego a perder, eh, no paro de pensar en los errores que cometí e intentar como que mejorarlo ¿no? para el siguiente juego. Al final de cabo tenemos una vida más y es lo que cuenta. No, no voy a parar hasta que ya no tengamos ninguna oportunidad. Hemos practicado con equipos mucho mejores que PSG, entonces yo creo que tenemos lo necesario para eh, pues, que los errores del, del día de hoy no vuelvan a pasar. Obviamente en el momento estamos frustrados, pero creo que eso no va a llegar a afectar para el siguiente match. Comes in for Junja, he does get the knock off at the back of it. There's a slicing Maelstrom, but it only really lands onto one. And now they can turn and burn for the fight. First blood finally goes over to Sale. Nice knock back here from Miro as he gets on top of two. The Pop Blossom is decent, but there's no damage right now. The resets are coming in. Double kill for Sale. R7 are doing well in the early game. Yo creo que Gam año tras año ha ido empeorando, la verdad, que este mundial no es distinto. Entonces, como dije, tenemos lo necesario para eh, mejorar y que el enfrentamiento contra Gam sea muy positivo para nosotros. Queremos sí o sí llegar a la siguiente y enfrentar al, a uno de los mejores equipos que ya viene siendo después de, de Vietnam. Entonces, más que nada, eso, ¿no? No importa lo que pasó antes, ahora mismo eh, Vietnam se está viendo como una región débil, entonces... Eh, vamos a aprovechar y dar lo mejor para nosotros. Entonces vamos a dar lo mejor para que eso se cumpla y poder seguir vivos en, la, en el Mundial. Wow. Um, Audi coming out with some fire today ahead That of the match. Words. The thing is, if the results of MSI went differently, I'd be a little bit more surprised. But 
uh, R7 eliminated GAM, and it was LLA's first ever international best of series win at MSI. That's the clip you're seeing on your screen right now. So he's got a little bit of... Um, He's you know, backed it up a, once already. Back up once already. So can he do it again today? Repeat history. We'll have to find out. It was a shocking upset when this happened back at MSI. It did take, go the full three games for the best of three. And historically, VCS was one of the regions that seemed to be stepping up yeah. pre-COVID. Then they oh, yeah. had that separation from the international play. And when they came back, it was a little disappointing to see Gam, who historically had been this really exciting team to watch, not be able to put it together, especially against LLA, who historically, again, had been one of the weaker minor regions. So there was this flipping that seemed to be happening in the power rankings. Yeah, you know, Gam was always that... that team that was playing like the Nocturne lane swap nonsense, Levi, a powerhouse in the jungle, so good. You know, NA picks him up, steals him away for a couple of years. Oops. Like, oops, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did you, what did you it do? Is, it is Friday the 13th. The water. What, did, what did we say? We've got Vampire, the skill got sucked out. No, we, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> okay, right. So listen, obviously this, this wraps up for MSI, I think. Let's turn our attention to today. Let's talk a little bit about Slater and specifically, because it wasn't exactly the greatest start. He was brought in as an improvement after MSI. Considered the best, but he kind of got showed up earlier on. Well, yeah, I think that's the thing to note is that when Gam did have this kind of colossal upset against R7, that the community took it very seriously and they want to see improvements. And Gam was a team that was willing to make those happen. And Slater was brought in as a replacement to help step up and hopefully level up this team. And he has historically been very, very good domestically. But it's Artemis who's getting all the attention right now for the VCS. And Slater has been... Pretty forgettable, honestly, in his first series. It was it was a big disappointment to see him not able to convert at all. Yeah, well, it, it, uh, not even forgettable for me. He just got bodied <laughs> by rooting, rooting the bots out. Like, he was a part of a lot of plays. He was just on the receiving end every single time. And that has to be able to change, I feel like, for this team. Because if your bot lane is falling apart, like you saw it at the start of the day with like all the kills bot lane is getting. Like, yeah. When we're seeing Zaya Kaisa, it's such a meta that is driven by those champions influencing the rest of the map. And if enemy team picks Kaisa and is solo killing you repeatedly in lane, what are you doing, man? Yeah, and then when he got his hands on the Zy uh, Kaisa, excuse me, he, he did get some kills in the early game, but totally became inconsequential in the mid to late game. There's a lot of debates around builds these days on Kaisa. And he did not seem like he was able to actually convert when he did end up ahead, which is exactly what you want out of a quote-unquote superstar carry. And Mark, you mentioned a little bit ago, but you know a lot of the attention has gone to Artemis. If anybody was following the Asia games, it was Artemis that represented Vietnam as far as the AD, AD carry player was concerned. Slater wasn't there. A lot of the local representatives casters are talking about how the Vietnamese team was effectively GAM plus Artemis. Now, the reason we highlight that team, Wales are already surprising and winning. Slater, the man on your screen right now, you can see his stats, is struggling a little bit. So I want to zoom out. We've covered the bot lane a fair amount. Let's talk about some other players that could have an impact. They could be pillars for the squads, Kiaya and Bong. Um, top lane is mattering a little bit more than we were expecting. Uh, could could have an impact here. I see a sly grin on your face, Ender. Top laners, are they the make or break for the series? I don't think they're the make or break, but I think especially the Rumbles and the Kennens of the world okay. can be in the team fight phase. Especially like when you're playing up against, like we talked so much about the Renekton yesterday, I'm expecting to see like Bong on the Renekton, Kiaya locking in some stuff like the like the Rumble that worked so well when Levi gave early attention to the lane. Yeah, I think Adam is showcasing as well that, hey, we, we still matter. It was not Adam <laughs> smashing. <laughs> I'll have hey, you listen, know. there are metas where your top lane literally does not matter. I think we're saying that's not quite the case. Of course, you're not as impactful in the mid to late game. We saw the KDAs and the kills was all going to AD carries. But you can't just but ignore them completely anymore, right? You can't just ignore yeah. them completely. And I think both Kiaya and Bong have been some of these standouts uh, for their teams, despite the fact that they're struggling still. But they have been able to find big plays. And uh, Kiaya in particular, if he can get advantage on Bong, I think it's something that they can key off of. And I think that's really important too, especially if Slater continues to not impress so much on the bottom side of the map. You're, you know, leaning into more damage heavy top laners like that Rumble. That is going to be a very important thing to balance out their team fights. Uh, assuming the pace of the game or the way the game breaks down, I'm expecting it to be more top side favored for a game versus the bot lane might go to R7. Yeah, you can see the stats here. Kiaya having a very strong lane phase, even though, you know, in losses, your KDA is not going to look great. I think he is someone who can take the more lane dominant approach like you're saying Bong will often play, even on Renekton and Cassante and these sorts of things, more for the team. He runs around the map a lot more. And I think if they can kind of enable Miru with, with Bong will be where his success will be, where Kiai is probably more individual accomplishments. Yeah, I think that's something that Levi is going to clue into, though, and look to punish. I, I think in the game where it was that first game of their series they played and Rumble sets up for a very, like, level 3, level 4 tower dive up against the Renekton, I think that's something Levi would love to look for. Early top lane pressure to get Kiai running away with the matchup. You can see he can get solo kills after that. After that point, you transition it down, play for dragons, start stacking those up. Less than a minute to go. I want to know who you think is going to win, what the score is, and why. 
I, I kind of want to say Gam still, but that's just like. But uh, want and think is going to happen are two different things. Well, so they, come they on, give me an actual prediction. Wrong, despite my best attempts to believe in well, them, well, history repeats itself. R seven took down Gam. Audi said it explicitly. Vietnam is a weak region. You're going to bet against Audi? That's okay. coping. No, That's I'm co- sorry. I, I disagree fundamentally with that. Like, Vietnam was always the region out of Ooh. everyone that was, like, stepping up at, right beneath, like, the big four 25 regions, right? seconds. Yeah. Prediction and score. I'm going to go to... I think it's a close series. I am going Gam, though, and I think it's going to be the top side of the match. I think you need to be banning away the Rumbles of the World versus Kia. 2-1 was I'll go Audi. 2-0. You know what? He's oh talking smack. There we go. I, I'm, I'm here to watch what the chaos. What your heart says and your head believes are two different things. You want Gam, but your head's telling you Seven. That's what I'm hearing. Thank you so much for joining us here on Countdown. That's it from us at the Analyst Desk. It's time to over to Lowell Park to find out who will stand tall in our first elimination match of Worlds 2023. It's R7 versus Gam. Lowell Park. <laughs> EDS, they are definitely the team with the expectations. Just after the lose, it's a mix of like anger, depression, it's like and everything. Where did BDS go? Everyone has to beat their inner demons. EFM just completely scattered. 제가 LCK 데뷔를 서퍼링에 했었는데 서퍼링 시즌에는 사실 긴장도 너무 많이 하고 그러다 보니까 정말 사소한 실수나 말도 안 되는 큰 실수 같은 것도 하면서 자신감이 많이 하락되어 있는 상태였었는데 개인으로 생각하기에는 예전에 비해서는 훨씬 많이 되찾은 것 같기는 해요. You showed good performance, like even previous world. 이번에 오게 되면서 골든 가디언즈랑 하는 거 보고 되게 안정적으로 탄탄하게 잘한다라고 느꼈어가지고. I've got no intention of going home. My run in the plane is not done yet, so we're coming for you guys. We're to go up, so let's go up. In R7, they just look lost. I always take the losses in the best way. I don't stop thinking about the errors I committed and try to improve them for the next game. At the end, we have one more life. I think we have the necessary to go forward and we will try to do it. Damn, they were questioning things. They were second-guessing themselves. But so far, the success of the world in the last few years has been really good. In the last few years, I don't want to have a feeling like that. They had an opportunity to win, but the timing was very much against them. Thế là em giờ cần phải tìm cách giải quyết để mà hướng đến những trận đấu tiếp theo nó sẽ tốt hơn. Yo creo que Gam año tras año ha ido empeorando, la verdad. Es una oportunidad que no debemos pasar. G7 là team đã khiến cho team của em có được cái kết quả không tốt đợt em vừa rồi. Bọn mình sẽ không để hư dục BCS mình dễ dàng bị đánh gục gì đâu. Thế sao đâu nung cơ? Welcome back to the Caster Desk. I am just Oish Oinson. I was going to mispronounce name. my own name. <laughs> my God, what is going on? It's That's a little the early. It's Friday it. the 13th. It's yeah, it's just something in the air. I don't know what it is. I am joined by Dagda. We're bringing you the full Irish today. And I mean, it's do or die. I know we say it a lot. Every match matters, but it is. You got to win today. That's as simple as winning you're in. At yeah, least still I mean, in. across the board, it's going to be a case of... as. You say trying to get that big win, and for Gam versus Aura Seven, that's going to be kicking things off. I mean, for Gam, it's trying to strike back against the misfortune of what they saw at MSI, where Aura Seven were able to take them down, getting LLA's first ever international best of win. And now they're going to have to see if they can try and have that repeat performance here today. Yeah, that's the big thing again. With a lot of rematches coming up here from MSI, which is amazing to kind of see these teams kind of have such domestic dominance to bring themselves back to the international stage. But you got to prove yourself again. And I think for exactly for Gam, I think it's a lot of trying to prove themselves here because not only do they have a case of hey, we want to prove ourselves against R7, but also like. Team Wales is flying. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Who knew Wales great. could fly, but exactly. they can. Yeah. I thought it was when pigs fly was what we're supposed to go for. But apparently, the VCS second seed is on a barn burner of a, uh, of a story right now. And at the moment, Gam have to try and pick themselves up and be like, hey, look, we deserve to be up there with them as well. We're the first seed. 
why the hell are we falling behind here? And that's it as well. I think for R7 as well, on the opposite side of that, that they've been in this position so many times. They've been underestimated so many times, but they now know. Like, the thing is, you look at this again, it's a rematch. They know they can win. They know they can actually take this victory if they're able to kind of go for it. But it's about how how are they able to kind of make it happen. That's the big thing. Because I think in their last series, they looked good in game number one for R7. Game number two just kind of fell apart. Yeah, and up against PSG, as you say, like, it started off so well, and then Maple existed on Nico and managed yeah. to catch out a couple of players like the catch out Seo and the Ezreal in mid lane. It all started to crumble. And I think that's where, coming back into this, I want to see that cleaned up. I want to see a case of, hey, we're warding our flanks. We're not getting caught out as we overextend. Just playing that out cleaner because that could have been a game pickup against PSG talent. But as you say, game number two was a very different story. So both these teams, a lot on the line to prove. But with R7 kind of having that mental edge at the moment over Gam, we'll have to see how they try and run that one back. And of course, Gam did lose in the first round of the lose or the winner's side of the uh, bracket against Loud. So, a little bit of uh, uh, the America's pride, if you will, coming into this one here. Hopefully, uh, R7 will be able to complete the sweep against the the Vietnam champions. But go and jump into picks and bans straight away. Already, we're seeing big, big priority onto things like the Rumble, the Oriana, the big team fighters, if you will. Yeah, I'm surprised to see the Oriana finally kind of getting banned away, the respect given that's due to it, because we actually haven't seen it a huge amount coming into this. Um, Akali has also been permabanned against Movistar R7 by PSG Talent, so I'm curious to see if that one is going to try and continue. Very strong pick in the mid lane for them, but already Maokai taken away. So a lot of these big bans already off the tables, your two big tanky junglers in the Sejuani, the Maokai gone, which means we start to see things like the Lee Sin, and that start to rise up. And there is that Akali ban that we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, look, it's just something that I feel like is always going to be banned against the side of R7. You're never really going to let that Akali kind of go away from you. But it does see a huge priority now on that big engage tool, which is the Rel. Can be a bit of a flex. You can see a jungle that can go bot in the bot lane. Are expecting it to be in the bot lane, considering you have just given over the Lovers duo of the Zaya and the Rakan. And this is actually where I disagree with the priority here. I think Zaya is just so, so good in that bot lane. Good matchup into the Kai'Sa. We've seen Kai'Sa really struggle up against that. And as well, then you kind of have your own self heal, which is absolutely perfect. So on the opposite side for seven they are essentially taking what happened with PSG talent going hey look we actually want to try and steal that style and use it against Gam here and uh, try and go for these big circles with Jarvan Nico also probably going to be highly prioritized here for Miru and then you've got such a good engage and strong front line that you can then reposition very effectively on this Kai'Sa. All right, Gam trying to figure out where they want to try to take this last pick they might try and give some to Kiaya make sure he has some kind of priority up against Bong on that top side and exactly what they do they pick up the Cassante again just kind of a general solid pick all the and all realistically can carry we've seen him do multiple times get solo kills against big carries in these team fights well that's the thing bong has actually been a player who's willing to bring out some of these carry picks though like the jacks and that so i'm curious if we end up seeing something like gwen maybe even going in towards that top side or if he just wants to match tank with tank and kind of leaving miru and sale to be those big damage dealers but it does open up that opportunity but there we go we talked about it the nico taken away from miru gam kind of realizing hey look these big wombo combo comps are becoming way too much of a hazard in play-ins yeah big Big event diagrams as we've discussed so far in our in our lectures on the uh, on the champion select have definitely been the, uh, the 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 theme of this particular week. But I like what R7 are doing now, kind of saying, look, we got the Jarvan in early. We know we have the early priority. Let's take away things that can match that. Things like the Lee Sin now off the board. Also, Viego probably going to be taken away here. That was the other one that we saw Odi play the last time around. And then you're kind of drifting right the way down into kind of unknown territory at that stage. So curious to see maybe even the Nocturne actually against Levi. To be fair, um, Levi has always been an incredibly strong Nocturne yep. player and it does open up some opportunities for Akati to play some uh, unusual things that can be synergized with them. But we'll have to see as we start to go through. Miru, not going to get his hands on his Ari. That is by far and away his best performing champion, so not fully surprised to see that taken off the board. The Vi is going to be the last bound here from R7, so respecting the point and click CC, something that can just kind of find champion, kill champion. You don't really want to combo that up with something like a Cassante and a Rakan, especially if you're a Kai'Sa, you're just going to be so exposed if you get caught out by that. Yeah, and now I'm curious to see exactly what the plan is here for Gam. Talia could be an option here if they really wanted to go towards it, so you can set yourself up in the mid lane and kind of take that away from Miru, who has a good opportunity to try and keep some of these uh, playmakers off you, like the Jarvan, like this flag and drag. But Actually, I actually get the Wukong coming through. So Levi, this was a champion that he played a lot domestically and was something that he was more than willing to bring out despite the nerfs. Now that Wukong's got some buffs, we'll have to see how Levi can try and perform here up against Odin. See what he can do right now. It just feel like building themselves for that big team fight to enable Slater to be that carry with the Zaya. You've got so much engage, and now the Gwen gets locked in. Should, I say that in quotation marks, have priority over the Gasante. But as we saw yesterday, if you put enough resource in that top lane, she will fall. 
Yeah, and I think that's where you kind of got to go, right, can we actually manage that? There is an opportunity here if you are um, Levi to try and play heavily up around that top side, but the problem is you've already got like good priority picks on the bot lane with the Zyra Khan, so you don't have as many options to play around that. And the blind Silas coming in here, I think this is a relatively okay read where you can actually go, hey, there's a lot of the champions like the Azir and stuff like that are going to be okay to try and play up against. Syndra, not so much though. You actually have a ton of range. You've got good opportunity to continue to poke him down. And even having the opportunity to slam him away with Scout of the Week makes that matchup a little bit more difficult um, than I think Miru was bargaining for. Yeah, and as well as that, yes, the Unleash Power is a good ultimate to kind of seal away, but outside of that, maybe the quickness, well, that's about it really. Yeah, well, the problem is with the Unleash Power, you want as many orbs on the ground as exactly. possible before you use them. You don't have ways to generate those orbs aside. The thing is, though, I'm almost certain you can use Syndra's orbs against her. So it's kind of like a battle, battling back and forth. I could be wrong with that, but I think you can. Um, but it still means, as you say, like you're kind of looking for a Wukong ultimate, maybe a Cassante ultimate to steal something out, Rakan ultimate. But as you say, there isn't a huge amount of big ultimates where I'm like, oh yeah, this is the thing that you want to go for. Absolutely. Well, the teams are locked and loaded, I will say now. Kind of pretty much what we expected when we did kind of, you know, look at these two teams. They're very happy with what they've built up for themselves, basically kind of saying to themselves, look, we know where our priority is. We're going to be looking towards R7 when there's Jarvan to kind of catch people out, get that early aggression going that we've seen so often so far this play ins And on the other side, it's kind of about the Zaya. If the Zaya is able to stay alive and kind of keep herself safe, she's going to be in a huge amount of uh, you know priority to kill off all these champions that are diving on her face. And that's why I think you're right, Oshin. The Jarvan is the big one that I'm keeping my eyes on. Can you get these Cataclysms that are locking up the Syndra, locking up the Zaya, making it easy then for the follow-up with Silas and Gwen to get in onto these carries and actually try and devastate them? Because if not, I feel like you've actually got a really strong front to back coming through for Gam with this uh, Syndra and everything else in turn. Shall wait no longer. Jumping onto the rift for the first game of this best of three elimination match. Remember, you lose this best of three, your season is done. That is it, full stop, end of sentence. So you have to leave everything on the rift. If you're gonna go out, go out in a blaze of glory. And now Levi, he might be in a bit of trouble here. He gets CC down and he's gonna have to use a little bit of a dash. They got the damage, the night ticking, not quite able to get him. But now he's at the start with the decoy and he lost his flash. Yeah, that's a disaster for Leva. He's really going to struggle to try and clear his jungle. Plus, with um, the late reset coming through, I think he'll just about get back where his team will be able to help him clear. But it's not the start that you want at all. So nicely done by Aura 7. And that's something that we see a little bit popping up whenever you have the Rel in tow. It's like, hey, we can try and invade on top side. Rel can come over the wall with the crash down and try and make life a bit of a living hell for the enemy opposition. Well, they earned themselves the flash of Levi. Of course, you can, don't forget to log in and watch on lolesports.com. You can earn exclusive Worlds 2023 drops like emotes and icons. And you can get yourself something for free as well. Well, they did uh, get Levi for free, so I suppose it's... Uh, they didn't quite it's get him for free. They almost second. got him for free, but not yeah. quite. <laughs> and let's, all right, let me rephrase it. It's probably setting up a bit of a free early stages for Odin. Yes. Right? You have better clear now because Levi, as you can see, very slow it's going to be to get through his jungle because you don't have access to the E, which is your AOE on that first clear. Also, you want access to your Q because these are your two big damage dealers. So not having them means it's not going to be as effective whatsoever. So this will give the Jarvan a bit more of an opportunity. And even if Levi tries to show up for a couple of these early ganks, he could then be the focus. Like the, the knockups without a flash are very hard to try and get away from. So I'll be curious to see how Levi wants to try and respond to this. He will also be spotted as he starts to move towards his top side with a ward on his red. We're going to go for there. Of course, we have the first strike in mid lane for Kati, so it's going to try and basically abuse that range versus melee matchup that you were discussing as well. Shouldn't be too hard, to be perfectly honest, unless we have you know some kind of jungle innovation from Adi. We won't see too much there. Level 2 hit in the bot side by the side of R7. Lions, unfortunately, did go a little bit too close to the tower, so took a tower shot for his efforts. But at the end of it all, still pushing in favor of R7. And Seo, definitely someone to keep an eye on. The man was doing exceptionally good work here in, in, in Worlds play-ins. And also at MSI, he was kind of the big carry at that time as well. I'm curious to see what uh, Levi's chances are, are on top side, because I'm looking at his clear. Skip Gromp. Skipped, skipped his Raptors, and it looks like he's maybe considering a play on towards the top side, but I don't think they got the freeze on towards the top lane play as Kiaya was trying to fight for that. So it looks like he's going to try and work his way back down towards his bot side and just try and desync from Odie. So they're not going to be on the same crab or in the same position at once, but Odie now 
Either mid, or might even spot out Levi on this. I don't think he wants to spot out Levi. He wants to go for that mid lane, maybe get that flash out of him. So yeah, it's gonna go straight in. Gonna look to try and land the chains. Knock up is good. They're getting the damage down. There's a good red buff there as well. Flash forward, another flash. The red buff is ticking. The Miryu does pick up that kill. Will level up to keep him safe and healthy. And that could be huge against Levi, who's trying to turn this one around. The knock up no is decent. No flash. Looking to try and decoy it out, but he just can't. And the everybody gets a level up to keep them alive. R7, two to nothing. That was disgusting! The fact they both leveled up in that play to get the double kill. It's a disaster for Gam and it's flashbacks to MSI for the VCS number one seed. Oh, not a good start there for Gam, but great from R7. And honestly, just great from Audi and Miru to kind of recognize how much damage and how much tankiness they had to go for that play. Also, the fact that both those kills went over to Miru. Like, a lot of the problems that you have in these early stages of Silas is, hey, look, I'm trying to farm out, but I got to use my chain lash to get a lot of that farm makes it very difficult for me to try and uh, like keep my mana in check. Access to a very early lost chapter means that he's not going to have any of those mana issues anymore and should be able to spam spells really effectively, trade a lot more effectively with the Chain Lash as well. It just makes things so much easier. We can see now on the top side, Kiaya, I was going to say, one more snip snip and he would have been in serious danger. This is the kind of snowball effect right now, because not only are you losing those two kills in the mid lane, but now Kati doesn't have his flash. Now you're going to have to be very aware when level six is coming on the board that he's going to be very exposed if he's not too careful. Yeah, big, big win across the board here for R7. Now the pressure is on Levi again to be like, hey, look, bud, you've got to try and make that impact happen. But when uh, Odi is already kind of ahead of you, that can be a major issue. So I think for Levi, it's a case of let's try and wait for level six, use the fact that we have flash advantage now because Odi used it in this play. But you can see here, like, chain lash to get the slow, the knockback, not actually stopping Odi on the flag and drag was so sad. Odi as well being an absolute bro to tank those turret shots from Miru. And then that level up coming through as well just actually gives them enough damage. So you get the extra ability point in towards your Q, which means that chain lash is doing that little bit more. And then Odi with the level up at the last second as well. Such smart play from Miru to turn onto the minions immediately. I've got a little bit of criticism there for Kati. They saw the ward going down immediately because they pinged it. So they knew that Jarvan was in the area and he just didn't pay immediate respect, which led to his death. So, I mean, it's those little small moments that can lead you to a, a pretty bad situation. And Pallet definitely didn't want to be taking that particular trade as he almost goes down to himself. But a good push in here from R7's a bot lane means they're going to have pretty decent priority over this dragon should they want to take it. I mean, at this stage, you're kind of just controlling the map entirely. So, seven gam, a thousand gold down already at the six minute mark. And I think, again, it's a case of, right, well, how do we try and unlock this? And a lot of it is going to be trying again to play through your weak point, which is Cassie, which is why Odie, again, already here, just working off of Miri's pressure in the mid lane to get vision down, spot out where Levi might be. Levi is invading on towards the top side, but will maybe still away at camp, but I don't think he can really dive a level 6 Gwen. It becomes very tough when you don't have access to enough CC. A level 6 Gwen would also steal caps, so like that's perfect kind of defensive exactly, yeah. itemization just to try and go. I have movement speed and I'm just reducing your auto attacks from both the Cassante and the Wukong, so not really an ideal situation. Just a little bit of vision to make sure that they knew... Actually, didn't even drop any vision, to be perfectly honest. Just kind of went to see if they maybe could go for something, but nothing was really on the cards. And now we wait to see But level 6 is coming on board here for the solo laners and almost for the junglers as well where the next kind of big move is going to come. I will say, I think you've got a miss, bit of a missed opportunity here for Odie and Miru where they haven't revisited mid lane. I think enough safety played by Cassie to not actually shove out the waves and just let the waves crash into the turret has kind of helped out. But I, I would have loved to see them try and punish the Syndra while her flash is down. Now, there is an argument to say, hey, wait for level six, but realistically, the flash is going to be back up for Syndra as that level six gets hit for Odie. So unless they can try and make some sort of play here just before it comes back up, that could be an opportunity, but I think Rift Child is going to be the next port of call. Nice little Void Seeker from Seo, just to make sure they're not getting wrapped upon the bot side. It's level fives here for both these bot lanes. They do not him land the stretching strike onto the Zaya. Crash down from Leon, just to make sure nothing else crazy happens. There's a lot of posturing here between Slater, Palace, and Seo, and of course the Li Lions, but. For now, they're happy to kind of wait for things because the big thing I feel like is once they hit that level six, if you're ever isolated as an AD carry in this lane, you are going to get jumped on. And complete tangent. Is the Rel's Q called Stretching Strike? No, it's not. I'm completely oh, okay. Wrong. I was that's, like, that's, that sounds like a flex yeah, Armstrong move. <laughs> and you know what? You're right. It is because it's actually. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, we're gonna see them like, try and jump in now. There's still gonna be the crash down, trying to try and get a bit of CC. Nice cleanse there from Slater. 
Means he's able to get the auto attacks down and picks up something back for Gam in that bot side. Yeah, I mean, nicely done by Gam. I think or 7 were expecting Odie to be there that little bit quicker, but not in the position. Big win. Bot lane now going in your favor. Slater getting some of that early success means that he'll be able to punish this lane even more than you usually do against Kaisa. Plus get Dragon off the back of it. It's going to be easy pickings now for Gam. Yeah, stretching strike is Zach. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's where I was getting it from, so... Uh... It happens, but now that you got that bot lane going in and you're able to get, pick up that kill, does open up that first dragon for the side of Gam. So despite the early start, they've have been a been able to calm it down, you know, not get too flustered or too frustrated with the whole situation. And they are feeling a little bit more confident, I would say, kind of moving forward in the last few minutes. Yeah, I think it's trying to play through where your strength is, which is going to be on this bottom side of the map. Like, trying to make sure that you can actually play through Slater, use the advantage he has now. Because they play for Dragon, it does mean that R7 are able to move up towards this Rift Herald. And uh, I don't know what Gam are already thinking, if they want to try and go for something here. Yeah, they're going to look for something. Trying to see if they can maybe contest. Hard to do it though with the quickness being stolen or hijacked by Miru. And Seo trying to see if he can maybe go for a 1v1 in that bot side. Not to be, but for now it is just going to be a trade of objectives. The Dragon first went down to Gam. The Rift Herald now goes over to R7. Yeah, we will get a replay here. Palace hiding in the bush. Catches out lines as they go in. And even though they don't actually get the CC, they, Leon goes in to try and get the crash down completely whiffs, which just puts him into a, such a precarious spot. They would follow Pallet now in the mid lane, though, trying to see what he can pick up here. See if he can maybe go for a bit of a quickness here. The Unleashed power is good, and he doesn't even need his support. Kati knows the numbers, and they look good. Yeah, even with the two kills going across early, you can see still see how difficult this matchup is. Kati just continuously able to put the hurt down and get the damage there. Really good stuff from Gam. And again, we were kind of saying, hey, look, R7, great start. You're getting the two kills in mid. You're getting control over bot side. But it's now starting to fall apart. Oh, there's Levi as well on the top side. Pong going to try his absolute best, but he knows he's dead to rights. Does not use his flash, but does mean he's going to lose a huge amount of weight. They do know the Wukong is in top side, but I mean, it's a Zaya Rakan. Even you see Pallet there kind of saying, look, I'm going to go aggressive because I know there's nothing you can do against me. Yeah, at that stage, you can even see Sail wasn't entirely sure what the game plan was from Pallet. Like, is he going to use the quickness and immediately jump on towards the Kai'Sa and then Gam try and turn it around? It's really hard to try and play aggressive in these matchups when you've got so much opportunity to turn those plays back in your favor. Only now, moving down towards the bot side, has Rift Herald, and I think you'd like to get Sail some early gold, even having the push here from Mirror in the mid lane. This could be a dive they're trying to set up, but the wave is crashing that a little bit too soon, so they turn to Levi. Yeah, they're trying to see if they can maybe just stop any support from coming down here. You can see Katy and Levi slowly moving their way down towards that bot side to cover for their bot lane, but it's being cut off altogether by Miru and Adi. Not going to lead into anything else from that, and funny enough, we can see those two kills leading to big advantages in terms of the item completions there. you got Katy finishing up the Leandri's Anguish, and of course the Jack Show for the Cassante as well, but I mean, this is just Miru just really not respecting the damage at all. Yeah, uses the E to try and dodge away from the initial orb and thinks, oh cool, now we can clear out the wave quickly. I'll probably take a ton of damage back away, but doesn't expect that much. And then on top side as well, great knockback from Kiaya means that he just sets up perfectly for Bong. And same idea, Bong just playing a little bit too far up. Could have let that wave crash into him if you really wanted to. Yeah, really, really good. But come back in, and now Gam got themselves a little bit of a goal lead. You can see there that on the total damage is belonging by R7, but I mean, putting damage into Cassante in lane doesn't really mean a lot, to be perfectly honest. And I think, again, it's kind of Odie being a little bit quiet coming into this one. Like, it, the initial play in towards mid was really good. We got him over towards the Rift Herald, but we haven't really seen him follow up on anything. Looks like they're going to try and rotate bot lane up towards top, use this Rift Herald, and maybe see if they can look for a dive on towards Kiaia, but Flash up, not quite having his ult available, could help out a little bit, but it would at least get some fights for sale here. Does have the jack show as well. So tanky at these early stages there. 12 minutes only on the clock, but they're going to look for something. They're going to look for this Cassante. Come one, come all. See if you can take him down. They're going to throw a TP here as well. It's going to be answered, so Kati will be joining back in on top of this one here. The knockback is decent. And the sc scatter of the week comes out as well. They're not able to kind of utilize this right now. They've only got a certain amount of time left on this uh, Rift Herald. And they're giving Slater control over bot side. Miru will answer in mid lane, so it looks like the rotation is just like, screw top. We're going to try and take mid tower instead, which 
honestly could work out pretty well, but Levi now here. Oh, Levi does pop down the Cyclone to make sure he's able to try and get away from this one here. They're tanking this turret very much, way too long, and it's just all kind of falling apart right now. They're gonna lose two, they may even lose more as Kiaya TP down on top of that ward. Not quite able to get much else, he does go all out bomb, trying to see if he can just maybe snip him down, gets knocked back for his effort, flashes away. The Ignite, oh, excuse me, the fight! And now the Ignite, the Magna Storm comes in, they're gonna try and take down the Kiaya, they finally do, but that wave is huge, and Sayo and Lions, they have to leave. They gotta get the hell out of here. Sayo, you have Flash, but I don't know if you wanna burn it on this play. Uh, they have much bigger health bars than you, and there's a lot more of them. You need to back away from that play, and what started off so brightly for R7, that was 4v5, because Slater's just PvE. I mean, it was an absolute mess across the board for more 7 Target selection was completely off. They didn't know what the hell they were doing. They're overextending, so like, watching this play, right? A nice initial play coming through to get the stun on Levi and set him up. But watch the ult from Bong. It actually gets completely used onto the clone, which means that then Odi overextends with no follow-up. Levi's able to step away as, pa as uh, Pallet's able to come in and set them up as well. And now you've got Kiaya, who's able to TP in behind them thanks to that fantastic ward that R7 knew was there, yep. and then follow up on this play. And as you say, like, yes, it was four versus five, but you've only got Seo arriving now to this fight, which is already over. This is just Gam finding comfortability in this game. It's Gam saying, look, we are happy the way our composition works. We are happy to take these fights because you can see how good they are when they're able to get themselves together, utilize the CC they have. And honestly, it's been really just kind of down to the fact that Levi and, and Kiaya have been able to kind of link up so effectively. And then Pallet's kind of joining into the fray now that the laning phase is over. Yeah, honestly, like this is, Levi kind of shown his comfort on this champion, even set behind, but Pallet. Yeah, he's going to be able to get out of that one. He's still a Rakan and you can see the lane economy snapshot presented by MasterCard. Just everyone winning here on the side of GAM. Yeah, and that is shocking. As you said, like we were about to say, Levi was set behind pretty massively thanks to the, the early setup, had to burn his flash, but has done a really good job of being able to counteract a lot of the plays that Odie wants to go for, getting, apart from well, the mid lane play, but <laughs> getting those kills back. Now starting to set his team up, getting control for Kiai in that top side as well. And unfortunately for or 7 you're kind of in a rock and a hard place at this stage because you want to try and play this big dive, like launch yourself in onto everyone. But with Gam having control of the map and the tempo advantage, that becomes hard to do when it's not oh, for the back. They're coming in from all sides, but maybe we're not the ones getting collapsed upon. Maybe you are. There's the Cataclysm coming down. They haven't killed off a turret just yet. Now they have a flash away by Audi. As you can see, Miru finally coming in, steals away the quickness, trying to jump in here on top of the tanks. You got Levi going down first. There's a good needlework here. Good scout of the week, though. Gings them all right back into the hands of the Zaya, and now they can turn into this fight. R7 thought they had an opportunity, but Gam say no as they take themselves a three for one. It was a little bit messy from Gam, but they still come out on top thanks to that gold lead, and now they're starting to move in towards this tier two. Odi and Seo, I don't think you can hold on to this. That's going to be two terrors going across the Gam. Just, it just feels like every time they go for something, the mobility and the CC available to Gam just makes it so difficult to walk into them. And again, you see it so many times in these last few fights where R7 are kind of half committing, half not. Yeah, I think this is where, again, it's just a bit unfortunate on the timing for more 7 They would have liked to have Miru there that little bit sooner. Cassie doesn't have the unleash power, so we'll just... I mean, casually do two-thirds of Odie's health bar. <laughs> Without it. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I think this is why, again, like, the Silas would have worked out relatively well if they hadn't been a Syndra on the opposite side. But see here, Pallet goes in. The fact that Pallet, like, you just can't get the damage down. Seo being zoned away by Kiaya means they can't actually finish off the uh, Rakan. The quickness coming out as well to keep Odie in check. And here, Miru, yes, you get a nice quickness in return. But you've all just set yourselves up. Kiai is too tanky at this stage. And then that scattered the weak into the follow from the grand entrance to Pallet is just absolutely perfect. I mean, the big thing I'm looking at right now in this team fight is look at Slater and Kati. They basically had full HP. They based oh, untouched yeah. in that entire thing. Yes, you're getting a huge amount of damage onto Levi, onto Kati, or sorry, into Kiaya, but that is not the priority targets. It needs to be on the Zaya. We never want to see a Cataclysm unless it's on the Slater. But that's the big thing, right, is when you have access to these like terrain, all terrain effects, like the Cataclysm, like the Weaver's Wall from Talia, a huge amount of it has to be a case of, hey, I want to try and catch the uh, the key targets, the parries in the back. Because if I don't, well, now I've just actually offered a defensive wall for them to yep. play behind. This making it more difficult for Seo to get access to them, Miru to get access to them, right? Like, you actually have to try and make sure that you're trapped in there with them. And I think that's where we're missing on some of the ult these terrain altering ults that we've seen. Just haven't been as effective as teams would have liked them to be.
7,000 gold need now. Two items here for both the carries of Gam. Kati and Slater picking themselves up. Leandri's Anguish and Amorla Nomicon, and of course the Navori quick plays and the Kraken Slayer, respectfully. I mean, it's just, it's getting hard because you're you're just a full item behind, and it feels like you were go you're gonna need either a miracle team fight or a straight up a mistake from Gam for the for R7 to come back into this. And now Bong's being caught out. Yeah, but what can he do? Well, what can he do? Because uh, he is getting bursted down and deleted from the map. He even tried to use the ultimate there to try and heal up something with the Rift Maker. It's just not going to happen. I mean, the Morello Nomicon's already come in for Kati, so Miru and Bong going to have a much more miserable time. In the Gore Drinker on Odie, he's not going to be too happy about it as well. So across the board, Gam have kind of said, hey, look, we're perfectly happy to go for this. Now Rift Herald on the bot side going to crack open another tier two for Gam. I mean, Gam are looking to rewrite the history books. They do not want to let another MSI happen right here and show that the VCS is actually a powerhouse region at Worlds Plains. Then. Absolutely. I mean, look, you look at Team Wales, obviously flying high at the moment in the winner's bracket already towards the elimination match. But, I mean, Gam were kind of that team that we always love to talk about. They, unfortunately, you know, for the last few years, haven't been able to kind of, you know, be at international levels. They've come back this year, very disappointing at MSI, but they're not letting this Worlds go just yet. And I think a lot of people are kind of disappointed to see how Gam performed at their, in their last series against PSG Talon, where I was like, oh, well, we expect them to try and fight back, to find those opportunities. Oh, sorry, not um, PSG Talon, opposite side loud. Yes. Whereas like, oh, we expect them to have this like stellar performance. They're going to try and play aggressive, like give us that BCS style. But um, Slater not having the best performances against Root, now looking significantly more confident. Katy here as well. This Syndra performance has been wonderful. Katy going to jump in straight and try and find Miru, but misses the scatter of the week. That's pretty big, and he's going to get a fair bit of damage struck on top of him. The Kaiser goes straight in onto the backside. They're trying to burn down this Syndra, and they will. Cataclysm goes down onto Slater, who has to let the feathers fly. Tries to get away from this entire three-man unit, and it's all a little bit separated. This is good for R7. They're not letting them fight in a 5v5. Now Bomb flashes back over. Pallet tries to go in, but Slater takes down the Gwen. Now in a 4v4, you got double Superman, or sorry, double uh, Pink Ward's in there to stop Levi from getting caught out. Audi does have a flag and drag should he need it. They go forward. They're going to try and burst down the Cassante and they will. 3v4. Crash down comes in. Levi jumps back over the wall. It's all the movement you could possibly want. Slater has sees so many low health bars and he wants to kill them all. Wants to be a part of his name's sake. And at the end of it all, it's a two for one in favor of R7, but Dragon's still alive. Gam needed to not re-engage or Steven stands <laughs> for round seven of the fight and that's where their comfort is. But now we might get a round eight as Slater, still here with Levi, trying to see if they can take the dragon. Gam, still hovering around. Gam going to go for the okay. dragon, and everyone Perfect. else just resets from R7. I mean, look, look at the health bars. I think at that stage, they're kind of saying, look, yes, we got two kills. We'll take the win, and we'll move on with our lives. I mean, this is unfortunate for Cassie. Tries to land the blue buff onto Miru, messes that up, then also loses the scatter of the week because of where Miru is positioned, which means that then Caddy's able to get jumped on. Slater does a good job of getting himself out of harm's way in the back line, but if you look on the upside, side, Bong is ripping apart Levi, so he's forced to stand kind of out of harm's way in the bot and then hide on these pink wards. Bong goes over the wall, he gets uh, put down, and at this stage, I think you just call it quits. Both teams need to back away. Kiaia, though, still has the majority, well, literally his entire health bar, so when, but when he goes over, all the cooldowns are back. We've kind of taken enough of a break here for R7 to gain everything they needed to, and then it's a case again of trying to play on this, like, uh, uh, edge of a knife as Gamma trying to see if they can take down some of the low health bars, but there is a lot of healing coming through on Miru and even with Odie again having access to that core drink. Can I just say a massive shout out to Slater who fought that entire fight and 100% put out all the DPS he possibly could and didn't lose a summoner. Yep. Like literally lost his ult and that was about it. Now Gam on a turn and burn for the big purple worm and they want to try and make this fight the last one. There is a ward though in the back of the pit that's going to spot this one out but I think it might be a little bit too late. Audi finally here, does get scattered the weak though. Pallet trying to see if he can look for a bit of a flank. They're turning and burning onto the Cassante and now they're going to try and burn down the odd one. Audi, excuse me, <laughs> to come back in now and try and start this fight. Bong has nothing. He's got no real flank potential. Levi just jumps back on top of his face and it's a double kill here for the side of Slater. Gam are just pulling R7 apart back into the fight. Triple kill for Slater and Gam put their foot down on this fight and say no you are not coming back into this game. Gam are setting up so well around these objectives like vision control is already set up. You know that pallet is going to be spotted if the hex flash over the wall. They're turning as a group and immediately jumping onto Audi to get the jungler out of the equation for this but uh You've got two carries of R7. I don't think you want to try and contest this yet. They're going to back away. Yeah, I was going to say. They just poke a prod to see what happens. But watch this, right? Pallet has already swept this area, knows he's totally fine. So he hex flashes over the wall. 
immediately Odie turns on to, or Odie's turned on to, so then they can try and set up. Pallet is also getting enough of a charm on towards Leon's to keep him checked. Bong is in a terrible position yeah. for this fight. He's basically spent his entire time running up to the fight, only to have Or7 pivot away at the last second so they can turn on to him. Kaya, though, I mean, he's still tanky. He's still tanky, and they can't stay underneath the turret. This is the thing. You haven't picked up a single turret here as R7. I mean, look at this. And right now, you got a bit of a flank coming on from the Wukong, but everyone's just kind of backing away. And with 10,000 gold, they're just shy of it, to be perfectly honest. Gamma just feeling comfortable. Yeah, they just need to continue to put this pressure on. Slater, three items now completed. Even the Maw of Malmortius on this side, because he's like, oh, well, a lot of this damage is, well, Gwinsu's Kaisa, she's going to have a ton of AP. You're looking at the, the Silas, the Gwen, so perfectly safe now for Slater, which means with the extra summoner spells he's been able to hold on to for so long, he's going to be fine. And now it's just a case of dot your eyes across your T's. Take the top tower, push in mid, keep the pressure up, and just make sure there's no real opportunity for or 7 to find an, un or an outnumbered fight in their favor. Because that's the thing, around that dragon pit, it was very much kind of isolating someone out in a 3v1, then Bong was able to stay alive and kind of go for something there, but in a straight 5v5, you just, you just haven't got the damage, you just haven't got the money in your pockets to be able to fight this GAM team. And GAM looking exceptionally powerful right now, looking comfortable pushing forward. They will get an objective out outside the first tower for R7. But I mean, it could be too little too late because they're looking at their base being taken down as Miru throws away a Everfrost a little bit too far away. There's going to be Pallet taking a fair chunk of damage as he tries to go in with the quickness. They still have the Flash Magnet Storm, and you can see now, yes, the inhibitor was taken, but the Gwen is still going. And this is where R7 could maybe start to capitalize on the chaos. They will get the TP out of, I believe, it's Kiaya coming in. Yes, it is. And that's going to be there kind of taking that particular objective. But. I mean, for R7, they're not out of it just yet. And the longer this game goes, you do have to feel like Gam need to start putting the putting the, 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 the pedal to the metal. I mean, you've got 40 seconds until so, right? And that's kind of where that I'm an pedal optimist. meets metal. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm an optimistic all man, all right? All right, yeah. Well, yeah, I think this is where it starts to become a little bit more difficult because Gam, you kind of wanted to reset around about that time anyway, to come back on the map, to be able to threaten this next dragon. And you can kind of look at this, uh, where R7 are positioned. They're afraid to even walk out of their own jungle because they know River essentially belongs to Gam right now. Essentially does, and get a couple of item completions. Voice Staff is nice for Bong, but I mean, Abyssal Mass is already there. Kati takes away the largest chicken nugget in the box, and the largest chicken nugget says, no, I shall not go down to you. This person bought me fair and square. They shall consume me, but and now Miru and Bong trying to just walk up as the solo laners here. They are tanky enough to be able to try and, you know, maybe face check, but, I mean, you have to fight here as R7. You don't really have a choice. The thing is, though, Gam haven't set up in the same manner as they had before, where, like, Pallet having a flank. He's kind of playing frontline right now. Misses the knockup as well. Here we go. They're going to go in. Smite confirms that's the Hex Soul. There's the double knockback, and immediately, Hardy is dead. They're going to try to get in with a Flash Magnet Storm. Ooh, that was good damage, though, coming in from Bong, but it's just too little too late. Triple kill comes in here for Levi, and there's going to be a full house. Trips on dubs, double into triple, and the ace. Gam get everything. They'll push up mid, and they'll end the game. I mean, it was one last hurrah for more seven in an early worked out, but unfortunately Pong couldn't quite get the damage that he needed out across the line after being set behind early, and now it's the victory lap for Gam as they walk the minions home. Yeah, they walk the minions home, they even get the full applaud from their minions as they start to smash down these Nexus turrets. That's game one of this best of three as R7 step one step closer to elimination. Gam keeping themselves alive in the world's 2023 playing stage as they look to try and redeem themselves here in the loser's bracket. Now Odie will try and pad the KDA, but not even Gam will give them that. Brilliant stuff from Gam coming into this rough early start coming through, but they're able to bring it back, make sure they're getting control over these lanes. And I mean, from the initial hiccup that we saw over jungle in the mid lane, after that, it was kind of clean sailing for Gav. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you, you hit the nail on the head. It felt like they got that, you know, War 7 got that one good gank in mid. Everyone kind of patted themselves on the back. And then nothing really happened for the next five minutes or so, six minutes even, which meant that everything stabilized. Flashes came back up. Everyone got picked up their first few items. And then Gam just were, the, I mean, perfectly honest, the more proactive team. Yeah, and I think a lot of that kind of came down to, well, uh, Bong not being able to get control of that top lane matchup as much as he'd like. Because ideally, what you could do is, hey, look, we've got push with Gwen in top. We've got control over mid now. Let's get deep vision on this top side. We can spot out how we want to try and play around mid and then get the control that we need against Cassie and start to snowball the game that way where you've got these three big damage dealers in your front line 
but unfortunately they just never really got that ball rolling and it meant that Levi was able to kind of correct his course, get into top lane, fix that, get into mid lane, fix that and at that stage we've got Slater who's just popping off in the side. Yeah, Slater looked exceptional but as we head to break you guys at home can check out all of the VODs and highlights of the playing stage over at youtube.com slash gaming. We'll be right back with game number two. Bringing in a new roommate to save money, is that the plan? Say hi to Glenn from work. Yeah, I think I have a much better plan. We switched to my plan from Verizon. That is a good plan. Glenn. Get my plan starting at just $25 when you bring your own phones. Plus, save when you add perks like the Disney bundle. It's your Verizon. <laughs> 